Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video is the first video in our updated series of the future of transit, where we outline the current and future of rapid transit for cities and notable transit systems on the map, so you guys know what is coming to the places you live and work. Today, we're back in Ontario and the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area, and we'll be taking a look at the GO Transit rail lines and where they're headed in the future. Let's get started! GO Transit is a major regional transit system serving the Golden Horseshoe area of Ontario, primarily the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area. Beginning regular passenger service in 1967, it was Canada's first regional transit system, and it has grown from a single train line to seven train lines in a supplementary bus network it has today. In this video, we're first going to be looking at its existing network and coverage, and go through the system line by line to show you the future stations and service improvements it will have. All of the GO Transit rail lines begin their journey from Toronto Union Station. Located in the heart of Toronto right beside the harbour front, Union Station is an important intermodal transit station that links the GO Transit rail and bus network, the TTC subway and streetcar, the VIA rail network, as well as other transit options in the area. And of course, Union Station is just a short walk or ride away from important landmarks in the area such as the CN Tower, various sports stadiums, and the Billy Bishop Airport. Alright, time to move on to the GO Transit rail lines. Let's start with the westernmost line and work our way over to the east clockwise. First up, we have the Lakeshore West line. This line is the oldest of all of GO's services opening in 1967 and it spans 132 kilometers or 82 miles from Toronto Union Station through Mississauga, Oakville, Burlington, Hamilton, Grimsby, St. Catharines, and Niagara Falls. There are 15 stations on the line, with trains every 20 minutes serving well over 60,000 riders daily. This line allows for connections to notable places in Hamilton, including the John C. Monroe Hamilton International Airport, McMaster University, and also connects riders to future Mississauga here Ontario RRT at Port Credit Station, and the future Hamilton RRT near Hamilton Ghost Center Station and West Harbor Ghost Station. The next line is the Milton Line. This line connects Toronto to Milton and Mississauga. It has 9 stations and a length of 50.2 kilometers or 31.2 miles, serving over 30,000 riders with 10 trains daily. This route connects with the Toronto subway line too at Kipling Station and the future here Ontario RRT at Cooksville Station. And Arendelle Station is a modest walk to the University of Toronto's Mississauga campus. Next up with the Kitchener Line, another longer line of the system at 102.7 kilometers or 63.8 miles long. This line has 12 stations, traveling tr from Toronto to Mississauga, Brampton, Halton Hills, Guelph, and Kitchener, and it also connects to the TTC Line 2 at Bloor. Other connections include Via Rail at Brampton, Georgetown, Guelph, and Kitchener, and to the new Waterloo Ion Light Rail system at Kitchener. Over 20,000 people ride the Kitchener Line every day, with most trains originating and terminating in Branton in off-peak hours when the line has some limited service. Following that, we have the Union Pearson Express, a unique presence in the GO Transit system as Toronto's express airport link train connecting downtown Toronto with the Toronto Pearson International Airport. This service is the newest addition to the system, opening in 2015, and shares most of its tracks with the Kitchener Line before bending down at the end to arrive at the airport. The stops on the UP Express include Bloor, Weston, and Pearson, and it runs daily with all-day 15-minute service. Another one of GO Transit's rail lines is the Barry Line, one of the north-south lines in the system connecting Union Station to Vaughan, King City, Aurora, New Market, East Gwillimbury, Bradford, and Barrie. The line has 12 stations, carrying over 20,000 passengers daily with half-hourly peak service and hourly off-peak service. Riders can make connections at Downstreet Park for the TTC Subway Line 1, as well as at New Market for the Viva Bus Rapid Transit System. The next line is the Richmond Hill Line, aptly named so as it connects Toronto up north to the city of Richmond Hill. This line has 6 stations serving about 10,000 riders daily, but it only runs during weekday peak hours. 
Connections on the Richmond Hill Line include the TTC Subway Line 4 at Oreo slash Leslie, check out our station focus videos for those stations, as well as at Langstaff Richmond Hill Center for Viva and Go Transit bus services. Two more lines to go, and up next is the Stovall Line, our current favorite line to take. This line connects Toronto to Markham and Whitchurch Stovall. It has 11 stations over a 49.6 km or 30.8 mile length. Half hour peak service and hourly weekday midday service carries more than 15,000 riders daily, including us sometimes in the early mornings and afternoons. Connections are ample here on the Stovall Line, including TTC Line 2 at Danforth Main Street Station, Lines 2, 3, and the Eglinton Crosstown at Kennedy, and Viva BRT services at Unionville. And finally, last but definitely not least, we have the Lakeshore East Line. The Lakeshore West Line's twin that travels towards Pickering, Ajax, Whitby, and following to Oshawa. Like its twin, this line is also very busy, with over 52,000 riders using its 10 stations, and it currently provides 15-minute weekday service and half-hour service all other times, and even includes up to 4 express trains from Oshawa during peak hours. Most off-peak and some peak trains are interlined with the Lakeshore West Line, meaning that the trains will continue all the way to Aldershot Station, Hamilton, or Niagara Falls Station. Connections include Danforth again to the TTC Subway Line 2, and Guildwood and Oshawa for the Via Rail network. So this is what the GO Rapid Transit system looks at right now. We've got really nice coverage all around the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area, with the lines serving more than 230,000 passengers every single day. However, many of the lines still have limited, if any, weeknight and weekend service, and having more frequent service will certainly help boost ridership and customer satisfaction. Besides that, many of the routes have stations that are relatively spread out. Infill stations could be beneficial in some spots. And of course, extensions are always welcome. So, let's take a look at what's in store in the future of GO Transit. First up, we're going to start by outlining the Regional Express Rail project, as this is the biggest part of what's to come in GO Transit's future. The RER project is what the current government calls the GO expansion. Not a very exciting name, to be honest, but it aims to improve GO service by adding all-day two-way service to the Barry Line, the inner parts of the Kitchener and Stovall Lines, and generally increase the frequency of train service on various lines to as often as every five minutes on five of the corridors. This service will be operated using electric trains that have a lot of similarities with subway trains, and will likely be highly reminiscent of trains used in Sydney, Australia. The name RER comes from a, the very popular RER service in Paris. As mentioned, lines that are getting two-way all-day 15-minute or better service include the Lakeshore West Line between Aldershot and Union, the Kitchen Line between Bermelee and Union, the Berry Line between Aurora and Union, the Stouffville Line between Unionville and Union, and the Lakeshore East Line between Oshawa and Union. After that, lines that are getting two-way 60-minute service include the Lakeshore West Line between Hamilton Go Center and Aldershot, the Kitchener Line from Mount Pleasant to Bramalee, the Barry Line from Allendale Waterfront to Aurora, and the Stouffville Line from Mount Joy to Unionville. Metrolinx has also discussed frequent all-day service to Hamilton West Harbor and all-day service to Kitchener, so we can likely expect that as well. These service increases will be achieved with the full or partial electrification of the parts of the line that are getting 15 minute or better service, which is slated to be completed in around 2025. The entire project is currently being bid on by major international companies, and we have much more to share in the future. With the big program dealt with, let's take a look line by line to see the improvements they have in store for the future. As mentioned before, the Lakeshore West Line is getting all-day two-way frequent service along most of its route, and the line will be electrified up to Burlington, all part of the RER plan. In terms of new stations and extensions, the Niagara branch of the line will be getting a new station in Stony Creek called Confederation, slated to be completed this year, and another station further down the line named Grinsby, at about halfway to Niagara Falls. Since regular weekday service to Niagara began in January of this year, the area will continue to grow and see more GO service, which is super exciting. Besides this, the line is also getting some new underpasses in order to increase service, as well as station upgrades and renovations. The next line is the Milton Line. 
And even though it is not part of the electrification plan nor getting new stations, it is still getting some upgrades in terms of existing stations, especially Kipling, which will become an integrated transit hub serving the TTC, Go Transit and My Way, as well as Cooksville, which will be connected with the future Huron Ontario line. Next up, we have some upgrades for the Kitchener line and the Up Express. The Kitchener line corridor will be electrified between Bramalee and Union, and as we've mentioned in our last video, it is also getting a fourth track in this corridor, which involves multiple underpasses and overpasses, new track, as well as a tunnel under highways 401 and 409. This will ensure that both the Kitchener line and the Up Express have two tracks each to use, and it will mean much better service for the Kitchener line. Besides this, there are a number of new stations coming, or potentially coming to the Kitchener line. The most significant one of those is Mount Dennis Station, soon to be a massive transit hub that will serve the Kitchener line, Up Express, the Eglinton Crosstown RRT, as well as other TTC bus services, and it is slated to be completed in 2021 along with the Eglinton Crosstown. Unfortunately though, as part of the plan to add a new track to the line, Etopico North Station is going away since it is in the way. Instead, Woodbine Entertainment Group has agreed to privately fund a new station at the Woodbine Racetrack, which will be a much bigger and more connected option, with the Woodbine Mall and Racetrack and Humber College in the vicinity. However, this new station will not be served by the Up Express, as it is right at the split section of the tracks. There are a few proposed stations as well, including Breslau near Kitchener, St. Clair Old Western near Mount Dennis, as well as Liberty Village near the CNE. As for the Up Express, since the Kitchener line will be getting all day 15 minute service just like the Up Express already has right now, it will be treated entirely as a branch of the Kitchener line for a service perspective. Let's move on to the Barry line now. For the Barry line, the whole line will be electrified and will see hourly or better service for the whole line with 15 minute service between Aurora and Union. A big part of this is the Davenport Diamond Project, which will transform an intersection of GO tracks and CP tracks into a great separated solution in order to lessen congestion at this intersection, as well as becoming a new public space for local residents to enjoy. The Barry Line will also be getting some much needed connections with the Toronto subway system, with Bloor Lansdowne Station being the future transfer hub with the Bloor Danforth Line, and Caledonia being the future transfer hub with the Eglinton Crosstown. Besides these, a number of other stations have also been proposed, including Spadina in downtown Toronto, Kirby near King City, Mulock near New Market, and Innisfil up north towards Barrie. Alright, the next line we're going to talk about is the Richmond Hill Line. Now, unlike the other busier lines, the Richmond Hill Line is unfortunately not getting electrification, but service during weekday peak hours will be increased to every 15 to 30 minutes, which is welcome improvement. There will also be an extension to Bloomington that is under construction right now, extending Go Transit's network into an underserved area. And now let's take a look at the Stovall Line. The Stovall Line has been undergoing a lot of work on the whole corridor, especially with double tracking and station improvements from Unionville Station to Union, and with electrification coming on the horizon. By the time the whole project is completed in 2025, you can expect much better service on the whole route notably 15-minute all-day two-way service between Unionville and Union. We've already done a series of videos focused on the construction all along the Stovall line, so check those out if you haven't seen them yet. New infill stations along the rail have also been proposed, including East Harbor, Gerard, Lawrence East, and Finchies, and an extension to Uxbridge is also in the works since Go already owns the tracks required. And finally, we'll take a look at the improvements coming to the Lakeshore East Line. The line is getting electrified for the whole of its current length all the way to Oshawa, increasing the number of trips per day and providing much more frequent service. This line is also getting the longest extension out of all the lines in the system, with the extension to Bowmanville adding four new stations in the Oshawa, Cortis and Bowmanville's areas. The project is currently in the preliminary design and study phase, with four different alignment options being considered and hopefully we'll see this extension open in service in around 2025. Alright guys, so here it is. The future of GO Transit in the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area. With the addition of all-day two-way service and the regional express rail plan, 
plus all the additional stations and station improvements, Go Transit's rail network will become an even more reliable and convenient system for commuters and regular passengers alike, but we can't wait to see this system truly fresh out and realized. Like, subscribe, and comment down below to tell us what you're most excited about in the future of Go Transit. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram, join our Facebook group, and consider supporting us on Patreon so that we can keep making great videos for you guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.